everybody. Uh, today I have a big canvas here. This is an 18 by 24 and I'm going to be uh, doing a rainbow, not a splash, but I want it to look like water. So colors. I have quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue, my purple is a mix of the magenta and the phthalo blue. I have phthalo green, cadmium yellow light hue, and I have some deep hue on reserve just in case I need it. And my orange is that fall crimson and the cadmium yellow. All right, I'm gonna lay down a base coat, which is uh, the Liquitex Basics Titanium White. These paints are mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol and then thinned to a relatively, th well, actually that's a little thick. So it's a, uh, it's going to form a slight mound and then it will disappear, but you don't want it to make no mound that will be too thin. So this is the proper consistency. All right, let's lay down our base coat. Okay, I am switching over to voiceover mode. Uh, these paintings don't go quickly <laughs> and a 15 minute video takes me several hours to upload because I live in the boonies. I've had a 10 minute video take 10 hours before. It's very frustrating, but uh, all right. So I'm starting with the air swipe. And to be honest, if we were just talking about uh, composition and just the overall uh, aesthetic value, I would have left it right here. <laughs> but this is a study. Uh, I have some plans to do some big pieces. And um, before I attempt this on, say, a 30 by 40, I really need to get the technique down and I need to be able to visualize something that doesn't exist. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's practicing. This is, this is, you know, when you're trying to create something from your imagination uh, believe it or not, <laughs> usually don't nail it on the first shot. I don't anyway. There are uh, lots of artists out there who can do that kind of stuff. I'm not one of them. I have to work at it. I'm not ashamed to say it. So I was considering uh, maybe trying to sketch out my composition for the next one so that I do have something to work with because this medium dries, you know, you have about two hours that you can work with it before it starts to set up on you. And either I need to get faster <laughs> or uh, I need to give myself something to work with. So I may sketch out uh, a composition for next time. So now I'm, I'm throwing in some highlights to try to give the water some shape. I'm also thinking next time that I may not use the airbrush. I may just try to swipe those colors in and maybe that would save me time. 
Uh, one of the other things that I was testing out here was the color combination. I tried a splash uh, the other day with a rainbow color and I did not like the orange. So I'm trying this again with a different palette and I like this palette much better. The cats are uh, playing and so if you hear hissing and thumping, <laughs> they're having a tussle. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the splashes, these little, you know, cast-offs are pretty much the thing that I dislike most about this painting. I didn't like the angles that they were coming off. They were just too linear. Uh, unfortunately, something that's, you know, you may not notice that until... You, uh, you're finished and you can't figure out why you're not happy with this painting and then it's something like that. Okay, so that right there that I'm adding in is the Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue. I need to try to lay some shadows in there and that light hue is so light that it doesn't really give much depth for this particular technique or application. So I'm laying in some of that deeper hue. Again, adding more splashes. But the, uh, the good thing is, what I learned is how to make those splashes look good. The splashes themselves look good, the blending and, and such. But it's the shape of them that I don't like. So I need to look at some pictures of water splashing and see how it behaves. And that's how you do a study. Now that little splash that I just made with the magenta, I like that one. It has a randomness to it. Again, adding in some of those deeper shadows, trying to create some depth. Creating some shape, some movement. And now I'm adding in some highlights. And as you keep adding the depth and adding the highlights, the thing starts to come to life. It starts to look more like water. Those splashes bother me so much, I can't even tell you. Uh, I may have to go in there with a brush and just take them out and fix it. More highlights. Now I'm just, I'm just going back and forth between highlights and shadows trying to build it up. Oh, yay, more splashes. That was brilliant. <laughs> there weren't enough already. Yeah, I had some sense there. I was like, that's too many splashes. So I took it off, 
Oh, no, but I'm going to make one over there. Okay, good, good, good. I'm going to yell at myself sometimes in retrospect. I'm sure you guys do, too. I'm sure you'll see me do something and be like, no, just leave it. I always have to see, well, what would happen if? I'm putting some shadows and highlights on the edges. Now I'm making drips, which I also don't love, but it was a chance to practice those little drips <laughs> to get the droplets to look more realistic. Something I'll uh, mention, another thing that I've learned, is working on something like this uh, to work from the outside in. Because as I got to the end, and I'm trying to touch up the pieces, or the, the parts that are like in the purple areas near the edges, it was starting to dry. And... Uh, Sometimes I'd have to add white so that I could continue to, to blend. But uh, in the future, I will start from the outside in in order to keep it workable for as long as possible. If you keep moving it around, it won't have a chance to set up quite as much. So, you know, if, if you concentrate on those outside areas, I think that would uh, keep it workable a little bit longer. I, I have a tendency to want to start from the center and work out, but that's something that I would do when I was using brushes, and this is different. So it's a different technique. have a learning curve baby steps and don't be afraid to try this you know or any any of these more impressionist type things if it doesn't work out you can scrape it and you've learned something and you know so that rainbow splash that I did the the composition just got away from me and I did not like the way it was going didn't like the colors, so I scraped it. I was not going to be able to redeem that painting in my own eyes. But then I reused the canvas and did this on it. But I learned something from that painting that I scraped. Learned a lot, actually. Um, the, the color palette uh, was a big thing because I had used the Cadmium Deep the cadmium yellow deep hue instead of the light hue and it wasn't creating the uh the depth that I wanted but the combination of the two did so that was something I learned there are no failures there are only learning opportunities so be brave and try it and if it doesn't work out you will have learned something. You will have learned how the paints behave when you're using it in this fashion. Patience is also a uh, key. Something that I've had to uh, work on. And you know, when you're when you're doing a pour, a flip cup, you know, something that falls under the category of accidental art, uh, which is the original term for this style of, of painting. Um, there's this instant gratification 
and there's something really nice about that. And, uh, this is different, you know, this is, you, you got to put in a little bit of time if you want to get a realistic effect, but you'll blow through less canvases, <laughs> fewer canvases, uh, and you'll use less paint. There is very, very little paint um, from the colors added to this. This was mostly just that white base coat. And uh, I got a lot of entertainment out of it for myself. A lot of therapy. This is therapeutic when you're doing this. It's very meditative. You're not really thinking about all of the other things that you have to do. You're just concentrating, trying to use your mind's eye and, and picture how something looks. And Sometimes it's a nice escape, and I know that many of you feel the same way about art. There is a reason why people have a job called art therapy, art therapists. I'm not good at this voiceover thing. Okay, so again, I'm adding more of the shadows, and now I'm blending them in a little bit, varying the directions so that it has some movement. And one of the things that I've noticed is the more transparency there is, the more it looks like water. So lessons learned in this painting and in the splash didn't work out. That's what you got to do. Practice and learn. All right. And now for the close up. Okay, here it is. This is mostly dry. I like the splashes here. That looks water-like to me. But I think more white in here, more of these lighter colors to give me a bit more transparency. But there it is. Lots of lessons learned in this one. All right. Well, I hope you guys learned something. I did. I learned a lot. Looks like an angry bunny. Uh, please like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, if you find these videos helpful and entertaining and want to help me stay stocked up in supplies to keep bringing you the fresh content, the PayPal tip jar is a great way to do it. You can find that in the description box below. Also, there is the link to my Amazon store. Anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, whether it is in my store or not, anything you purchase, lawnmowers, washing machines, I get a small commission of at no additional cost to you. I like that section. More of that. Uh, so, also, what's in there? Uh, my Facebook group. Yes, join us there at Go Make Some Art. It's still a little wet there. Go Make Some Art on Facebook. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions, get some inspiration. And also in my, uh, in the description box there is the link to my website. That's where you can purchase my art and my music. And uh, I think that's it. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.